Greetings and welcome to this video looking at this particular question here. Examine the different legislative powers of the UK Parliament and the US Congress. This is a part B. So firstly, you get no choice. You have to tackle this one. Um, secondly, it is a part B. So you are expected to make reference to the, the, the theories, the um, structural theory, cultural theory, which best explains uh, these ideas. You don't have to, you can just use well, let, let, let me, let's do this one at a time. You don't have to refer to one of those theories, but if you don't, you won't be getting more than a nine, and realistically, you won't be getting more than a six. Um, you don't have to refer to more than one, so you can do the whole essay on structural, you can do the whole essay on cultural, or, or indeed um, the other one, which I can never remember, um, rational. Um, and you could probably get full marks just looking at one. However, I would recommend that you do three sections, possibly two looking at structural and one looking at cultural, or the other way around is probably the way that I would set it up. Um, however, there the you, you're more put it, rather than an essay being wrong if you don't, you're more limiting the amount of marks that you can get, which is slightly different. Now let's look at this particular question because it's examining the different legislative powers of the Parliament and Congress. So first of all, it's the legislative powers of Parliament and Congress. So if it talks about um, going to war or something like that, then that's not a legislative power. If it's something like, if you're talking about PMQs, not a legislative power. If you're talking about um, Senate approvals of nominations, not a legislative power. So it must be about the, um, the ability to create laws and how that's kind of impacted. The question is also different legislative powers. So we're, we're here not any, any kind of similarity. So if you say both houses have the power to pass laws, irrelevant, doesn't get any marks at all. Um, so it must be differences between the two. And because this is a comparative question, what we're looking to do ideally is to go between the UK and the US repeatedly, like almost like a snake. We don't want to go, this is what the UK has, this is what the US has because your comparisons, your comparison will be terrible because you're just basically describing the two. You want to be snaking between the two kind of constantly. This is a tricky question because you're, there aren't a huge amount of different legislative powers in the way that you might kind of think structurally. You know, you are, ideally what you want in your head is to kind of go, oh, well, the, the UK has this, but the US has this from a structural point of view. And actually there, there isn't a huge amount of that. There are a few, which I will talk about. But actually what you're going to be looking at here is more in terms of a political understanding of which one is more powerful and which one is less powerful. So for example, and you'll see this in the first topic we're going to be talking about here, the US Congress tends to have more legislative power because it is separated um, from the UK Prime Minister. Now that's not an official power, it is an impact on how they end up being more powerful. So the different legislative powers, and you'll see this in the answer, is more to do with the relative power that they have rather than the official powers that they have. Okay, which is quite tricky and that's one of the things that makes this um, a, a, a difficult question. Um, I'm just going to quickly flip this on to animation. So, um, I can talk about it one bit at a time. I'll just click save there and I'll bring that back up. So, reminders that of course we have to be talking about um, differences only and different legislative powers only. So my computer is being unhelpful at this particular point. Give me up. There we go. So, US has greater separation of powers and therefore it is, has a lot more independence on legislation. There is a permanent government majority in the Commons, almost by definition, except maybe in a coalition, but even in a coalition, it's still if there's two parties in power, then together they still have a majority in the Commons. And so that makes, um, that makes the, the US has greater separation of powers and therefore can be more independent. But it also means, on the other side, that the UK, the government is more likely to be able to dominate it. A, because they help have a permanent majority, which isn't the case in the US, because you can get divided government. Think right now, Trump has got he, Trump Republican power in the executive, but um, Democratic uh, power in the House of Representatives. Um, and also the whips are far more significant in the UK, um, far more in the UK than in the US, and therefore uh, members of Parliament are far more likely to go along with a form of a kind of party representation rather than a delegate model or a um, Burkean model, which we might have kind of um, seen 
uh, in, in, in the US is, is far more strong. The UK government expects to pass most of its legislation. The US does not, especially when you get divided government. And even when you don't get divided government, the UK government does their Queen's speech and expects to get most of it through. Whereas the US, the, U, the, the US Prime Minister, the US President goes to Congress and basically asks them if they will consider his or her legislation. So the UK government has a far more has far more control over the legislature, which means the legislature has less power. Um, of course, if this was an essay with AO3, you might now be arguing about this and saying, well, Brexit, blah, 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 blah. But for the purposes of this question, make that a distinction. The US has far more power to reject or to um, amend or even to just block or whatever um, the, the legislation. And of course, they can, you know, there's vetoes and things as like that, but of course, vetoes is not a legislative power, so be careful. Now, legislative powers are equally shared in the US. The House of Representatives and the House of the Senate have more or less the same powers, and they are certainly equal in terms of stature. One house is not superior to the other. Yes, there is a phrase upper house and lower house, but in political and structural reality, they are equal. Whereas in the UK, UK the Commons is severely um, or significantly superior to the House of Lords for the powers that you know, powers to delay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, elector, electoral legitimacy and so on. And so this makes the legislative powers of the Lords far less than um, the Commons and therefore far less than the, than the Senate. So there's a key difference that you could, get, you could get a really good paragraph out of. Now in the UK, both houses deal with most issues. So in the UK, House of Lords and the House of Commons will talk about everything. Whereas the Constitution in the US actually gives foreign policy exclusively to the Senate and domestic policy tends to go to, uh, be dealt with by the um, House of Representatives. So they don't necessarily always look at the same thing. There is a slight, uh, uh, I don't know, I might say similarity here, but there's also a slight separation in the UK in that financial bills are only ever considered by the Commons. So these are key differences in terms, terms of how what the different kind of houses look like. Um, yeah, so you could say it's a similarity that they have different powers, but we're not looking at similarities. This essay is about differences, and therefore your differences are saying, well, the lower house looks at this, and the senior house looks at this, and the lower house looks at this. So the different houses and the different countries are looking at different things. There's only certain things that they will be, both be looking at both of. Um, we're getting into quite technical things here that I wouldn't necessarily have expected you to pick up on, but if you're going to get a good answer to this kind of question, then you need to be experts in Parliament, and so those of you that did know some of these differences would be able to bring that in to make yourself stand out. Congress often passes legislation, um, so it often fails to pass legislation due to gridlock, i.e. one house says yes, the other house says no, jammed. That cannot happen in the UK um, because of the structural differences of the House of Commons being senior. Um, and that then affects the power of them. So even though you could say, well, the US one is more powerful because they are separate, actually the UK one is more powerful because it never gets jammed in the same way. Remember, this is not an argument about which one is more powerful. You are just arguing how are their powers different. So don't worry about creating an overall, this one is more powerful or this one is more powerful. Just deal with each paragraph separately, each topic separately, and let your analysis come forward. Now, what do the colors mean? Now, the everything here that's red, I think you would say is a structural difference. Everything that's blue, I think you would talk about being a cultural um, difference, or maybe in some cases a, um, rational difference, but let's not focus on those ones. Um, so uh, I'll just look, the structural ones I think are, are quite obvious, but culturally there's no real reason why the whips are stronger in the UK rather than the US, other than the fact that they always have. I mean, it's probably linked to the fact that there isn't a less separation of powers, um, but culturally we have whips and they follow the whips. Um, the UK government expects to pass most of its legislation. Again, that's a cultural thing. The US is more independent culturally. They, it, might, it might be initially caused by structural difference, but culturally it's there because they, were, they, they didn't want a powerful prime minister. Uh, they didn't want a powerful president. They didn't want a powerful king. Think about the whole idea of freedom and checks and balances. The, the US legislature exists to block the president. The UK government is far more culturally subservient.
Um, the the powers one, I've kind of put one in yellow and blue, uh, sort of red and blue there. The fact that the commons is senior to the lords is there structurally, but there is a cultural element to it as well in that we now expect that an undemocratic lords is ne less likely to interfere with the um, electorally elected, democratically elected commons. So there's, there's, a, there's a cultural link there that you could discuss as well. So um, as you can see from the amount of red, you could do this whole question purely as saying that these differences are best explained using structural differences, and then you could have explained them and gone into them and so on. Or perhaps you could have two structural and one cultural is probably the way I would have done it, weaving between UK and US um, repeatedly. Now you can go and watch your individual video to see how you have done on this question.